Hey, what's up guys? Joker here and I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to talk to you about AMD and Big Navi and also just a tiny bit I guess about um, Ryzen 5000 or Zen 3 announcement as they just had their big live stream about an hour ago or so. Uh, we got some really big claims from AMD, lots of exciting stuff concerning Ryzen as well as Big Navi, which they teased at the very end, which is going to be the main focal point of this, because they actually gave us a glimpse at some benchmarks, which I wanted to uh, at least test one of those against my RTX 3080, specifically Borderlands 3, which I already had installed in my system. Um, and, you know, just kind of talk about that from there. They only showed three benchmarks, so of course, not a ton to go on. It's not gonna give us a definitive picture, but at least it can give us kind of an early preview of maybe where we could expect Big Navi to line up against the RTX 3080 flagship from NVIDIA, which was recently launched, even though you may or may not be able to actually purchase one. But first, today's video is brought to you by MMORC.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro, which you can get for just $15, as well as Office 2019 Pro and Office 365 and if you act right now you can get an additional 27% off with my code JOK27 at checkout and that'll knock the price down on Windows 10 Pro from $15.29 all the way down to $11.16 and of course they accept a wide variety of payment from PayPal to credit cards to Bitcoin so be sure to act now and hit up the links down in the description below. So yeah, if you missed that live stream from AMD, I'll link it uh, down in the description below if you want to go ahead and check it out. It wasn't really that long, honestly. They really cut right into the meat and potatoes of it, which I absolutely appreciate. Not a whole bunch of fluff and bullshit. Pretty much all very gaming-focused stuff. Um, you know, of course, they talk about some production workload things with CPUs. That's going to be uh, a pretty big topic. But they focused a lot on, uh, you know, consumer-level, uh, you know, CPUs and GPUs didn't really get into Threadripper or anything like that too much. Um, but yeah, 5900X, 5950X looking very compelling. They're talking about their biggest IPC uplift uh, in a generation. On the 5900X, they were talking about, um, you know, 25, 26% uh, on average IPC uplift versus the previous generation 3900X, which is going to be absolutely huge. They threw up a absolute monster score in Cinebench, the first CPU they're saying to have over 600 in single core performance, scoring 631. And I think the 10900K um, was around the 560 mark or 580 mark, maybe, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, very impressive stuff with that. But as I said at the start, I really want to focus on Big Navi here because this was, I thought, something I didn't really expect to see it today, uh, apart from maybe a little tease. And we did, we got a little bit more. Uh, than really what I was even expecting. So, uh, you know, they showed off the graphics card on stage, the design that we've already seen uh, by now. Jay kind of leaked it a little bit, you know, a few weeks ago, and it was shown off on Fortnite on a custom server from AMD. Uh, so these pic pictures of the graphics card have been out there going with the triple fan design. Looks like an absolute beast of a reference model graphics card. Very exciting to see AMD ditching um, the blower style coolers and going with something like this, which should be a very adequate solution even when compared against partner cards. Now, the one slide they showed off in particular that I wanna focus on are some actual average FPS benchmarks at 4K on the RX 6000 series Big Navi graphics card, which they did not specify if, if, if this is the top tier GPU, which would assumingly be the 6900 XT, which is the current rumored uh, naming scheme for this. But, um, you know, if they're talking about 4K gaming performance, I have to assume that this is the top tier card. I mean, come on, they're not gonna come out and show some mid tier card here uh, in this tease here and show scores for it. And then be like, oh, by the way, we have a more powerful card, um, you know, when it actually comes out. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that this is their top tier graphics card. If I'm proven wrong, at a later date when we get the full reveal on these at the end of the month, then, you know, so be it. But let me know down in the comments below if you think this is the top tier card. Uh, but they show this off at 4K at ultra quality presets and all badass quality preset in Borderlands 3 running at 61 average frames per second. They showed Modern Warfare at 88 frames per second, which is not a really great benchmark to go on because we have... No idea what map they were testing on. Was it Warzone? Was it multiplayer? What was the map? Where did you test? You know, lots of variables there. Gears of War 5 would be another good benchmark to test on because it's a, you know, very closed off benchmark. It's extremely repeatable. It's going to be identical every single time, just like on Borderlands 3. And of course, you know, they 
cherry picking benchmarks they know they're going to look good in here uh, and I did have Borderlands 3 installed on my system from the recent RTX 3080 review so I went ahead and ran a benchmark at the same exact setting they use which is the badass quality preset at 3840 by 2160 in DirectX 12 thankfully they did notate that it was running on DirectX 12 but I will also note that at least for Borderlands 3 this game does run a few frames per second uh, uh, better on average in DirectX 11, at least for NVIDIA graphics cards. So it does favor DirectX 12 API for AMD. There's really no doubt about that. It's been the case ever since the game came out mid last year. Uh, so that's really not changed a whole lot, although NVIDIA performance has gotten better on it. It still runs better in DirectX 11 in my personal testing, but I'm not really going to hold that against AMD. You know, all of these companies do this. NVIDIA does it, AMD, Intel, you know, they're going to pick the products that's going to make them look the best. So this is only going to give us one picture here uh, of how this card can run. And again, they average 61 frames per second on the maximum quality preset, which is the badass quality. And on my RTX 3080 Founders Edition card running its stock settings, nothing changed on it really, uh, except I do have the MSI Afterburner Fan Curve uh, enabled, which I always use, which makes the card run a little bit cooler. And on mine, I was averaging around 57 frames per second. Now back in my review, uh, I had actually showed 67 frames per second, but again, that was running on DirectX 11. So it runs better in DX11 on the NVIDIA card, but in DirectX 12, it favors AMD. And here they're actually beating out the RTX 3080 in DirectX 12. So it's really your takeaway on whether or not you consider that to be impressive. Um, I, again, I guess it's impressive that they're even at that point where they could possibly be neck and neck with the RTX 3080. But again, this is a very small glimpse into the performance of what we could expect from Big Navi. Uh, we really need to get a much broader picture of more titles, titles that maybe don't necessarily favor AMD or NVIDIA. But, you know, based on this... It seems like we could be shaping up to see two cards that are running, you know, maybe fairly neck and neck in terms of performance. NVIDIA is going to win in some games. AMD is going to win in some other games. And at the end of the day, that's honestly a really good thing for competition because then gamers can choose based off of maybe the titles that they play or, you know, availability of graphics cards because if a game is running, you know, four FPS faster in one game or another, that's not really going to make a huge difference uh, in a lot of cases so you could you know you could basically go off of availability and seeing what we've seen so far with the RTX 3000 series and not really being able to get these cards at all I would hope that maybe AMD will um, maybe have sort of sat back and learned a lesson from what happened here with NVIDIA and then you know moving forward once these cards come out um, you know, in the coming months, I'm assuming sometimes in, in November, we know the Ryzen uh, 5000 series is coming out November 5th, and then we'll probably see Navi maybe late November or sometime in December, right in time for the holiday season. And, you know, as long as they learn from NVIDIA's mistakes there and can, you know, deliver on the supply part of things, they could end up stealing the show from NVIDIA um, solely from that perspective of, you know, maybe they lose in more games than others, but if they have the supply they're going to be able to fill the demand of gamers out there. And as long as they're also competitive on price, that's going to be another hard thing. You know, they are using more video memory on their top tier card. It's supposed to be 16 gigabytes of VRAM versus the 10 gigabytes on the RTX 3080, although we're expecting to see a 20 gigabyte version sometime in December. So there's still a lot of questions, still a lot of variables here, a lot of what ifs, you know, is AMD gonna have supply? What games are they gonna win in? What games are they gonna lose in? Can NVIDIA come back from you know, the kind of botched launch of these cards, even though as impressive as they are and the value that they're at, they need to be able to deliver on the supply for the demand of the graphics cards and, you know, kind of beat down the bot situation and everything when they do have cards available. So lots of big questions here going into the last part of the year here, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on the Big Navi. Um, little tease that we got here, the 6000 series, uh, or the 5000 series rather for this Ryzen CPUs. Lots of exciting stuff. Looking forward to testing these in the coming weeks and months. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and I will catch you guys next time for another video.